We're going to unpack all the injury news after Atlanta's win in New York, but I thought you guys might enjoy a little peek into the analytics here at Falcons today. We picked up 201 subscribers between weeks 8 and 10. Compare that to weeks 11 and 13, 279. So I'm not saying that if you subscribe, the Falcons are going to win. I know that's not how it works. I'm not going to not say that. So keep the good times rolling. Help us reach 16,500 subscribers. Welcome on in to the 6-6 six and six Falcons today. Atlanta took down the Jets 13-8. to eight. It wasn't pretty. There was a lot of rain and a lot of penalty flags raining down. But ultimately, this offense put together a good end of the first half and a strong start to the second half. And the defense, well, they did not allow a touchdown for their ninth straight quarter, dating back to Clayton Toon in the third quarter against the Cardinals. But let's unpack all of the injury news coming out of this game. So we'll dive deep into the Caleb McGarry and Nate Lanneman and A.J. Terrell injury news. But Drew Dahlman, David Onyemata, and Jeff Okuda were also mentioned during Arthur Smith's Zoom press conference today regarding injury news and updates. But let's start with A.J. Terrell. He was placed into concussion protocol. We know in 2023, concussion protocol is not something to mess around with, and it's hard to say when he will be back. It's not a 0% chance he plays this week against the Bucs, but going into concussion protocol on Monday definitely does not get you in a good path to play on Sunday. Now, as for some guys who are week-to-week, Nate Landman and Caleb McGarry, both with knee injuries, avoided major injuries, significant time being missed, fortunately not on the docket for Atlanta. So Arthur Smith was definitely upbeat about those two players returning in the near future. But let's start by looking at the cornerback position because A.J. Terrell and Jeff Okuda both suffered injuries in the win. Terrell more serious than Okuda going into concussion protocol. And losing A.J. Terrell for even a game or two would be a really tough pill to swallow. Because if you look at what he's done this season, completion percentage when targeted, 58.5. 374 yards and three touchdowns. I know three touchdowns does not look good, but when you go up against a team's number one wide receiver every single week, you're going to get beat from time to time. PFF has him ranked, by the way. 23rd out of 118 qualifying corners. Now, if both Akuda and A.J. Terrell miss this upcoming Sunday, we're going to see more of the rookie Clark Phelps. But let's just say that Okuda is ready to go on Sunday and Terrell is not. Well, we're going to see more of Clark Phillips regardless, but Okuda is going to take over as that number one outside corner. And I don't really know how I feel about that. Like, Jeff Okuda this year has been playable. But he has not really been a great cornerback. Let's just call it what it is. Especially if you look at what he's done as of late. I mean, the first two weeks of the season, he missed. Then he plays weeks in th three and four in a uh, limited snap area. But the last two weeks against the Saints and against the Jets, 103 yards allowed in coverage against New Orleans. And Tim Boyle and Trevor Simeon, 141 yards in coverage against Okuda. I mean, that is almost a fireable offense right there, given how bad the Jets are offensively. So if Okuda is unable to go, they've got some other guys in depth that are going to have to step up and fill in some big roles. But Atlanta does not get a gimme this upcoming Sunday in terms of opposing wide receivers. It's Mike Evans, who just put together his 10th straight 1,000-plus yard season. And Chris Godwin, who has been battling injuries the last month or so, but he's probably going to be a good-to-go player for Sunday. So not a good week, to say, the least, to say the least, to miss your starting corner in A.J. Terrell and your next best corner in Jeff Okuda. But keep an eye on Clark Phillips, who I thought played pretty well filling in. He's gotten some good run as of late. You're also going to see some more of Flowers and some other bench guys that are primarily special teamers filling in if Atlanta is down those two guys. But let's just call it what it is. Not a good week to miss your two starting corners if that is the case. Now, before we get on to the rest of today's injury news, I do want to give a shout out to our awesome sponsor, Prize Picks. Thanks to Prize Picks, I've had an absolute blast watching football this season and basketball as well because I'm making up to 25 times my money. And all I'm doing is picking more or less on two to six player stat projections. So Monday Night Football is not the greatest matchup. It's Jake Browning and the Bengals going to the Jags. 
So I'm going to take the less on Jake Browning at 218 yards. And I like the more on Travis Etienne, 67 and a half rushing yards. If you like my selections, feel free to ride with me. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS. And when you do that, Prize Picks is going to give you a deposit match up to $100. Now, all the information I just said is in the comments and description of today's video. So scroll on down and get started today. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. Let's get back to the other two big injuries coming out of this win. Nate Lamont and Caleb McGarry both suffered knee injuries, and we'll look at each one player by player, starting with uh, linebacker Nate Lamont. So Andre Smith filled in for him in the fourth quarter once Lamont went down, but Atlanta is thin at linebacker. Right, Lamont's already the backup taking over from Troy Anderson, who was lost in week two of the season. But Caden Ellis, he does not have a whole lot of continuity continuity to his left if Nate Lamont goes down. Lamont, by the way, has had a phenomenal year ever since Troy Anderson went down. 78 tackles, five tackles for loss, two sacks. He picked up his second forced fumble of the season on Sunday, an interception uh, not too long ago as well against the Cardinals. And he's ranked 22nd out of 82 qualifying linebackers by PFF. This is more for the casuals out there, but Landman would be a sneaky big loss. If you haven't watched a lot of Falcons football, but you want to pass the eye test when you're hanging out with your friends this weekend, here's a free little uh, tidbit. You can sound a lot smarter by going, you know who's going to be a big loss if they don't have him this week? Nate Landman. The defense just revolves around this guy being in the middle of the field because he really has been a centerpiece for this defense. And losing Grady Jarrett sucks. Losing A.J. Terrell sucks if he is gone for a week or two. But Nate Landman, he might not be the best player on this defense, but at times it feels like he's the most important player on this defense. Now let's look at the offensive line. If Caleb McGarry is unavailable for this Sunday and maybe the next Sunday or so, it's going to be Storm Norton filling in. But before we talk about Storm Norton, let's talk about what Caleb McGarry has done this season. As the guy got off to a bit of a slow start to the year, but he has really picked it up down the stretch. He's ranked 22nd out of 83 qualifying tackles, an overall PFF grade of 73.4, three penalties allowed, and four sacks on the year. But we can dive in a little bit deeper. Let's look at McGarry's stats from weeks one through seven compared to weeks 8 through 13. PFF overall grade, up. Pass blocking grade, way up. Penalties, down. Pressures allowed, down. Sacks allowed, down. McGarry did not have a wonderful September, but he has been money in November and now into December. So this would be a big loss on the right side of the offensive line. But fortunately, Arthur Smith said he does not believe either nor, excuse me, either McGarry or or Lamon suffered a major knee injury that would cause them to miss extended period of time. How, if there is an absence from McGarry for a week or two, Storm Norton is going to be your starting right tackle. And I think in the 93 snaps that he has filled in, remember he came in, I think, in the Texans game, and then he also took over for most of this game against the Jets. He's only given up one pressure and a PFF grade of 65.0. I'm very confident in Storm Norton filling in on the right side of the offensive line. He has not been some disaster when taking over. And not a lot of options or not a lot of cases here for McGarry. He's only filled in twice this year, but he's got plenty of NFL experience. He's not some rookie UDFA. He's been across the league. He's got plenty of starts. He's got plenty of appearances. Storm Norton can definitely hold down the fort for a week or two if needed. Now, before we get on out of here, I was texting with one of my Atlanta friends about if they had to pick one Atlanta athlete to restart their career with injuries off, who would it be? And fortunately, the Falcons and just Atlanta sports in general have not had a lot of all-time greats go down to injuries. This one may not really scream restart due to injury because they had a great career, but could I interest you in Julio Jones? Like, Hall of Fame career, in my opinion. But it could have been even better if he did not have the soft tissue injuries either slow him down at the end of the year or clearly keep him from 100% throughout the later stages of his career. So maybe Julio is 
a bizarre answer given how successful he was, but I feel like he could have been even that better. Uh, you all join, yeah. Jeremy? I mean, I was thinking, you know, Danny Heaton, the Atlanta Thrashers. Thrashers? <laughs> yeah, the Thrashers took him second overall. You know, he dealt with some injuries. I think he could have had a really good career. Yeah, you're a big Thrashers guy. Yeah. Who's your favorite player after Danny Heatley from the Thrashers? Uh, probably Ilya uh, Kovalchuk. There it is. Good one. It's all two players you know right there. Yeah, there we go. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Can't beat uh, Dustin Bufflin. All right, that's it. Gonna be that's gonna be it for today's show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're gonna sign off, and we'll see everyone later.